paycheck, the Kaiser allows himself to be hustled off on his usual summer cruise by his Chancellor Theobald von Bateman Holbeck. Everything will be taken care of. There is no reason to change plans. of Europe's rulers to change plans. In the English Channel off Spithead, King George proceeds with his own summer routine, the annual review of the fleet. the Tsar entertains a summer guest, Raymond Poincaré, President of the French Republic. A ceremonial visit between allies. disappeared from the headlines. Society has set out on its circuit of leisure with government officials among the crowds. Europe's less leisurely millions will satisfy themselves with an occasional Sunday at the beach. The weather is marvelous. an American tourist, Colonel Edward House, sails home with his earlier anxieties relieved. Europe, he has written to his friend, President Woodrow Wilson, is wrapped up in sports and social doings. People are talking about the recent regatta at Henley, won for the first time by an American crew, the Harvard boat captained by a young Bostonian named Leverett Saltonstall. Everywhere, the omens are peaceful everywhere except in Vienna. On July 23rd, the Austrian leaders execute the scheme they started weeks before. They persuade Emperor Franz Josef to sign a harsh document. Punish Serbia and he will crush the Slav nationalist movement that has been gnawing at the southern provinces of his empire. Suddenly, Europe rings with a dread word of alarm. Ultimatum. The ultimatum is only a formality. Vienna is preparing to act no matter what the response. Serbia, under its young regent, Prince Alexander, in effect agrees to Austria's terms, but nevertheless calls up its troops. Europe, secure, self-satisfied Europe, is stepping toward the brink. In late July 1914, the Tsar appears in St. Petersburg before an agitated crowd. The small Slavic country of Serbia has been threatened. Russia, the big brother of Slav nations, is aroused. The slogan, in the streets and in government, support our ally Serbia. Now, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany, alerted by the sounds of gathering crisis, cuts his crew short and hurries back to Berlin, an unsuspecting captive of his advisors. The text of Serbia's soft reply to the Austrian ultimatum is kept from him, in order to leave Austria free to act. 
As big powers are drawn in, the diplomatic channels begin to flood with activity. Berlin to Vienna, Belgrade to St. Petersburg, to Paris. On July 27th in Berlin, government leaders report to the Kaiser in a special crisis session. That same day in London, a voice of moderation speaks up. Sir Edward Grey, England's languid foreign secretary, urges Berlin to mediate between the principles. But the message is ignored. July 28th, convinced that outsiders will back off. Austria takes the ultimate step, war against Serbia. From the Danube River, dividing the two countries, Austrian gunboats shell the Serb capital of Belgrade. Balkans, the Tsar is urged to mobilize his armies. He stalls, orders a limited call-up, initiates a desperate correspondence with the Kaiser. I shall be overwhelmed by pressure. Do what you can. Signed, your loving Nikki. The answer from Berlin. I fully understand. I am exerting my utmost influence. Signed, your devoted friend and cousin, Vili. But it is too late, the pressure too strong. Convinced by his ministers that Germany is getting ready to strike, the Tsar orders all-out mobilization. Now, all over Europe, the crowd rises to the allure of war. The war fever rages, and even the intellectuals are not immune. German novelist Thomas Mann will embrace the war as a purification, a liberation, an enormous hope. English novelist H.G. Wells, defeat Germany for the sake of peace and disarmament throughout the world. Dr. Sigmund Freud of Vienna, all my libido is given to Austria-Hungary. A few speak in revulsion. Albert Einstein deplores this species which boasts of its freedom of will and yet makes war. But now, war is Europe's will. spirit is inflamed by the movement of Russian troops toward German borders. A fatal mechanism is turned on. The clockwork of war plans. Time. Ready. On August 1st, the clock strikes. The Kaiser summons his nation to war. Objective on the timetable is Russia's ally, France. France, confronted with a brutal German ultimatum, tempted by an opportunity to regain its lost territories of Alsace-Lorraine. 